Hello my mellow babies, it's Tara here, the self-proclaimed Boss Burgers enthusiast on YouTube. On my channel, I make videos on whatever I feel like. Out of all the random topics I cover, Boss Burgers videos tends to do the best. I can see why that is. Truthfully, I just like making videos that I would want to watch personally. I'm just happy that there are people who enjoy the show as much as I do. However, if you do want to see other video essays about Bob's Burgers, I think Man of a Thousand Thoughts has a few good videos on the topic that you should definitely check out if you haven't. But I'm pretty sure you have if you heard of my channel. Anyways, I wanted to talk about one of Jean's first official friends, Courtney Wheeler, our resident musical queen of the series, who will undoubtedly give your heart safe palpitations. Out of the three friend groups within the Belcher children, Jean has had the most unique situation. Tina has her normal group of bad friends that we all have a love-hate relationship with. Tina has also recently added Sismina to her friend group, someone who I would consider one of Tina's kindest and most sincere friends. In a group of mostly fake friends, Sismita is a needed person in Tina's life. I hope we get more Sismita content in the future. Daryl was a big part of Tina's friend group in the first half of the show, but he hasn't been in the show for a while. I honestly hope that they replace his voice actor because I really do miss Daryl as a character. He was friends with all three of the Belcher children, just like Zeke was. Plus, he's one of the few POC in the reoccurring cast, so it's a shame that he's been missing for the last four seasons, especially since he was so prominent in the show. As far as Louise goes, surprisingly, she has the healthiest group of friends. Well, if you don't count Millie. Rudy is a great friend who always comes through for her. Andy and Ollie are also good friends of hers and is always down to do some schemes with her. Millie is the best frenemy a girl could have. Louise and Millie's friendship has grown a lot since their first episode together, but that's a video for another time. Millie may be crazy, but at least she's loyal. Jessica is newer to Louise's friend group, but personality-wise, they're both very alike. I could say the same thing with Kaylee too. In other words, Louise has the most genuine friend group out of the Belcher children. It makes sense that Louise has a good group of friends. She has a no-nonsense attitude and can spot fake people from a mile away. She may not be the easiest to get along with, and she may not be the easiest to get to know because she's standoffish. However, that vetting process seems to be working in her favor. Now, Jean is a unique case when it comes to friends. For the first two seasons, Jean didn't really have an established friend group. In fact, he preferred to do solo activities when he wasn't around his sisters. Jean is friendly to everyone, so he kind of became secondhand friends with both of his sister's friend groups. So technically, he is friends with Zeke, Rudy, and his sister's other friends. However, he only hung out with them because he didn't really have much of a choice. It was more of a friend by association type of deal. The only people Jean was actually close to in the series was Tina and Louise, especially Louise, if we're not counting Linda, obviously. So while he had friends, they weren't really close by any means, which makes sense. Jean is too old for a lot of Louise's friends and too young for Tina's friends. He doesn't have classes with most of them and the only time he sees a lot of them is when he's around his sisters. So while Jean is friendly and open with people, he prefers to go solo if his sisters aren't around. Jean is often busy working on creative projects or eating something he found in his locker. As far as people goes, he's not adverse from speaking to others, but he's not seeking it either. He'll speak to you if you're in his presence, but he won't go out of his way looking for them to hang out. It seems like his sisters and his mom are the only people he wants to genuinely hang out with, and he's perfectly fine with that. Jean is perfectly content with entertaining himself without the need of other kids. However, that changed with the introduction of two people, Courtney and Alex. Courtney was introduced in season three, and Alex was introduced in season eight. These are the only two people currently who Jean is actually close friends with, separate from his sisters. It's interesting that the most outgoing person out of the Belchers only has three very good friends, while the most antisocial Louise has the most amount of friends. In this video, we're focusing on Courtney because she came first and she's a queen. Then in part two, we'll talk about Alex, who is Jean's best friend in the entire show. So get your dance shoes on and warm up your vocals as we get ready to talk about our resident pop star, Courtney Wheeler. Courtney is one of Jean's first official friends and is Jean's love interest in the series. Well, the only appropriate love interest, I should say. He was in love with a puppet 
and a lunch lady, but I really don't count those because those are more of crushes than genuine love interests. Courtney is one of the more eccentric girls on the show. She was introduced as an annoying sixth grader who happens to have a huge crush on Jean. We actually learn a lot about her in her very first episode. She sucks on her necklace. She is very pushy and overbearing. She doesn't care about personal space and naturally annoys everybody around her. We can't forget how she has a congenital heart condition, which apparently makes her kick people's seats uncontrollably. Even though it's played as a joke, she actually does have to take pills for her condition every single day. She may use it as an excuse for everything, but she actually does have a medical condition that could put her in a hospital. She's also very talkative and chews very loudly, but that's besides the point. In her very first episode, Courtney and her friends hear Jean singing in front of the school. After this, she quickly develops a crush on Jean. So, her and her girl gang corners him in the hallway and kind of pressures him into going out with her. Granted, Jean could have said no, but he didn't want to hurt her feelings, which is a common theme between these two. This is the point where they officially start dating. Tina and Louise were strongly against this. They of course found her incredibly annoying, and if she's dating Jean, that means she's going to be around them a lot more. Bob and Linda were excited for him. After all, Courtney is Jean's first girlfriend, so of course they would be. However, when they explained that he didn't really like her, Bob told him that he shouldn't go out with her if he really doesn't like her. But did Jean listen? Well, no, of course not. You see, Jean tends to describe himself as Switzerland. If you notice, he usually doesn't feel strongly about most of the schemes Louise gets him involved in. He just does whatever Louise does. If Louise wants to sabotage something, he's right behind her. However, if Louise changes her mind and tries to fix things, he will follow. Jean only really cares if he's pushed to a certain point or if it's something that he actually cares about, like candy. Tina and Louise have their own sense of right and wrong. Jean, however, is the most morally gray out of the Belcher children. His moral compass is very selective. While Louise and Tina usually express guilt or remorse, Jean usually doesn't feel that strongly about most situations to have these type of emotions. Don't get me wrong, he does feel bad sometimes. He's not an emotionless robot. It's just that if he's not invested in the outcome, he doesn't really care about how things end up. It's very rare that Jean is the person to have a change of heart or to stop something from going too far. It's usually Louise or Tina who does this. However, when it comes to Courtney, Jean doesn't have his sisters to make these type of decisions for him. He has to be the one to take initiative and break up with her. And when confronted with this choice, he takes the more cowardly route and continues to date her despite not liking her. Even though he is very unhappy while he does this, Jean is very avoidant and tends to steer clear of hard emotional situations like this. So he doesn't know how to break up with her without hurting her feelings and feeling like a jerk. If it was up to Jean, he'd just suffer in silence and drift off during college. You do feel bad for him for the first half of the episode. However, the second half of the episode is where Jean's moral grayness becomes even more apparent. After some creative coaching and practice, Jean goes to Courtney's house to break up with her. However, before he gets the chance, he meets Courtney's dad, Doug. Doug makes jingles for commercials and seems to be very successful at it. He also collects records and is very involved in the record community. What you have to know about Doug is that he's a very involved father. Doug is very passionate about all of Courtney's projects. He reminds me of those dance moms you see on TV who gets way into their child's activities. He's one of my favorite parents on the show to be honest. On one hand, he's very supportive. He helped produce Courtney's fall play and when I say helped, he pretty much did everything from the fall musical numbers to the costumes to bribing Miss LeBonds to get it produced in the first place. When Courtney wanted to make a music video, he wrote the song, recorded it, and produced the video and put it online. When Courtney wants something to happen, he makes it happen. On the other hand, to make these things happen, he generally uses underhanded methods, like promising Carly Simon would be at Courtney's musical, stealing Gene's song and using it in a commercial for his client, using Gene to sabotage Alex, a literal child, to win a roller skating competition, forcing Courtney to roller skate to relive his glory days as a skater. While he is a good dad generally, he's also overzealous and tries to live through his daughter in a way. And the fact that he's always beefing with children is just so funny to me. Linda tried to beat his ass for throwing a shoulder pad at Jean's face. Like she actually tried to throw hands with Doug. And also Alex's mom tried to beat his ass when he tried to give Alex diarrhea. 
This man is so unhinged that he has parents constantly trying to fight him. Anyway, back to Gene breaking up with Courtney. When Gene went to Doug, he instantly fell in love with all of his musical equipment. We all know that Gene loves music, so for him, Doug's place was a paradise. So Jean was presented a choice, either break up with her now or stay with her and enjoy all the benefits that come with being her boyfriend. Of course, he chose to stay with her. This is where Jean went wrong. Even though Courtney was pushy and annoying, she was never fake about how she felt about Jean. She was sincere about her feelings for him. Jean didn't like her back, which isn't his fault. However, pretending to like her and using her to be around her dad's stuff is a pretty crappy thing to do. Then using her birthday party to perform a demo for Doug in hopes that Doug will give him a record deal is also pretty bad. Then on top of that, when she tried to sing along to his song, he yelled at her in front of the entire party and caused her to have a heart attack on her birthday. Not only did he embarrass her on her birthday, he kind of ruined the party for everyone. So yeah, even though this episode you start off very sympathetic for Gene, through the halfway point, he made a selfish choice and it ended up hurting Courtney in the end. Not to worry though, Courtney did not let that slide. Jean went to the hospital and apologized to her for pretending to like her. When he finally broke up with her, she died. In the video. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. She just pulled a prank on him, pretending to die of a broken heart. Courtney knew that he wanted to break up with her and just wanted him to be honest with her. She forgave him rather quickly and wasn't really all that mad. She was surprisingly cool about it even though he kinda ruined her birthday party. Personally, I would have held a small grudge. Doug sure did. <laughs> That man is petty as hell and I love him for it. I personally think stealing Gene's song was a fair trade-off for putting his kid in the hospital. I don't know. Was it petty? Yes. But, you know, we love petty parents over here. I think this episode was important for Gene's growth as a character. And yet, this was only their first episode together. Now, let's talk about their next episode together, Season 5, Work Hard or Die Trying Girl. In this episode, Gene and Courtney had a major conflict. Miss LeBonds is holding an auditions to select an original idea for the fall musical. In her words, she is refusing to do Grease again. Trust me girl, I get it. I'm more of a Chicago or a Sweeney Todd type of person anyway. If you know anything about Gene, you know that his main passion is music. So getting an opportunity to do an original musical is huge for him. He was very excited to unleash his passion project, Die Hard the Musical. Truthfully, Gene does have talent for this type of stuff. The song he made for Louise's presentation in the Topsy episode was called Electric Love and it was top tier. He also made all the music for Tina's Thanksgiving play, The Quirky Turkey. He also acted and danced in both plays. Gene is very talented for his age. I also wanted to add that Tina is also very talented. She wrote The Quirky Turkey and acted in a lot of school plays. She's a very talented writer and performer. And also, I cannot forget about Louise. She is an amazing business girl and an excellent promoter. She always knows how to get location, actors, props, and can pull together a production, all while making some money on the side. I'm just saying, the Belcher kids would make bank in theater production. I just felt like I needed to say that. So... Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Courtney knew Jean was going to audition for this spot. Apparently, while they were dating, he let her read his play. Which, I, I don't know, I think this says a little something. You know, he let her read something that's a passion project of his. So, she obviously wanted to be in his play. She's been taking hip-hop classes, so I guess she wanted to put them to good use. I don't know what hip-hop has to do with Die Hard, but you know. Now, this is where the problems start. Gene told her that he didn't want her to be in his play and essentially said that Courtney didn't really have the talent to be in his play. He said he wanted his play to be quote unquote good, implying that Courtney would kind of ruin it. Mind you, he didn't even land the audition yet. Obviously, this hurt Courtney's feelings. Yes, at this point, they weren't exactly friends, but I feel like he could have been nicer about it, especially since she was very supportive of him doing this play in the first place. But don't worry, Courtney, again, did not let that slide. Gene was feeling pretty cocky about landing this audition, but he forgot that Courtney has a petty ass father with both musical talent and way too much free time on his hands. 
hands. Courtney stole his thunder by doing the sassy sister film to Die Hard, Working Girl, the musical. I have to admit that it was a pretty good idea. And because Doug promised to bring Carly Simon if they did the play, Miss LeBond chose to do Courtney's play. Jean was obviously devastated by this. And whenever Jean is sad, Louise always comes up with a revenge plan to get back at the person who hurt her sweet baby brother. I say baby, but obviously he's older, but you know, you know the vibes, you know the vibes. So Louise's idea was to throw a protest play in the secret boiler room on the same night as Courtney's play. Then on top of that, she took all the people who didn't make it into Courtney's play and let them be in Jean's play. This was Zeke, Rudy, Daryl, Peter Pescadero, Andy, and Ollie. He also recruited Miss Merkins who was kicked out of Courtney's play by Doug, which was a dick move because she's been playing piano for this fall musical for like 24 years and Doug is over here breaking tradition. Whatever, Doug. Louise was also in Jean's play as the blonde bad guy. I don't know. I didn't, I don't think I saw Die Hard. <laughs> if you're wondering where Tina is, well, she kind of betrayed Jean and got a role in Courtney's play. In her defense, it was a big role and she got to be around Jimmy Jr., who was also in Courtney's play. I'm not justifying it, but you know, girl boss. Also, it was a pretty good move by Courtney to take Tina away from Jean. Good girl. The day before the musical, Jean was frustrated with his cast. Courtney's play was polished and was actually pretty good, mainly because Doug, a grown adult, produced it and wrote the entire thing for her. But yeah, Jean was getting frustrated with his cast. Zeke wouldn't stop wrestling. The twins kept holding hands. Daryl was adding five, six extra notes to his song like he was Beyonce. Rudy's asthma was threatening his life every other second. And Peter Pescadero was, you know, he was ginger, so. Yeah. So Gene's solution to this was to demote everybody. He demoted the entire cast to stagehands and decided to perform a one Gene show and being his most fabulous self. I mean, to be honest, Peter didn't really do anything, but I guess he was demoted and fired too. Miss Marcus didn't get fired though because she's a queen, obviously. Now here comes the night of the musical. Courtney and Gene's plays were battling it out. Courtney's play was well produced and the music was pretty good. Gene's self-produced play was doing pretty well too. Louise kept stealing audience members from Courtney's play and nearly had the place filled up. Louise charged five bucks a head and made a good amount of money off of it. Linda was enjoying Jean's play as usual, but Bob and a lot of the other adults weren't really enjoying Jean's because, well, it was unpolished and he was literally just screaming. <laughs> The quality difference between the two shows is obvious. That's what a budget can do, honestly. Side note, Miss Merkis is, is really cool. She can play multiple instruments at once. She really is a superstar. Eventually, Doug realized that most of the audience was gone. Jimmy Pesto low-key snitched and told them about the Die Hard musical in the boiler room. This led to Doug going downstairs to confront Gene, and he ended up throwing a shoulder pad at Gene's face to get him to stop singing. Obviously, like I mentioned earlier, Linda started throwing hands at at Doug, which is valid because Doug hit her son. I want to be clear that Courtney at this point didn't want her dad to do that. She actually was enjoying the song that she heard Jean singing before Doug decided to throw it. You have to remember that Courtney does love Jean's play, which is the whole reason this feud started. She just wanted to be involved in his project. And obviously Jean doesn't want anybody besides herself producing his project. After this, Mr. Fran decided to cancel both plays and was going to send everybody home without finishing either one of the plays. He even threatened to cancel musicals in general because in his mother's words, musicals are dangerous. All the kids were super disappointed by this because all their hard work was ruined. Jean obviously felt bad for ruining Courtney's play and didn't want musicals to be banned permanently. He realized that he didn't have the right to ruin her play for everyone, no matter how upset he was that his play didn't get chosen. In a mature move, Jean offered to let Courtney finish her play. Courtney, she felt bad too for stealing Jean's thunder and was just upset that he wouldn't let her be in his play. They both made amends and decided to combine their plays into like a Frankenstein play. They pulled together a play in like 25 minutes, giving everyone a chance to be in it. Not just Jean, 
everyone got to be in it. Courtney also told her dad that she wanted to do this herself this time without his help. Doug was disappointed but he let her do it and also he got slapped by Miss LeBonds but he absolutely deserved that. They combined the best of both plays and actually produced a really fun play together. The songs were good and the fact that everybody got a role in the play was also really nice. Gina and Courtney also shared their first kiss in the show on stage. That's when we found out that Courtney has two rows of teeth because her baby teeth never fell out. So that's the thing. It was a really sweet ending for them. Both of them made mistakes in this episode out of a place of hurt. Courtney stole his thunder and constantly rubbed it in his face. And Jean hurt her feelings, ruined her play, and fired his entire crew. Both of them could have did better. In this episode, Jean devalued both Courtney's skills and the skills of his entire crew. He believed that he was the best and kind of made an assumption that he's the only person with any talent. In the process, he put down everyone around him who didn't meet his standards. However, in the end, he ended up sharing the stage and letting other people shine alongside him. Jean has this habit of only valuing his own version of art. He believes that he is the most talented person in the room. Even though sometimes that's not entirely true. Talents manifest in different ways and art is subjective. Jean is very talented but we as the audience know that not all of his songs have been hits exactly. And also he isn't the only person with good ideas. I think this episode is important for Jean's character growth again. It's it's a good lesson in finding value in other people. By himself, his one jean show wasn't very good. However, when he collaborated with Courtney and shared the stage, the final performance from both of them was awesome. There's only so much you could do alone. Velma couldn't even do it alone, but when she recruited Roxy, she was more famous than she ever was. Ah, God, I love Chicago. The episode not only showed the value of teamwork, it also gave Jean a lesson in kindness. All Courtney wanted was to be in his play. She never once downplayed his work throughout the whole episode. She wouldn't even have retaliated if he wasn't so harsh with her. He didn't have to exclude her from his play, especially before he even got the audition yet. In general, you just should be nice to those who support your work, generally speaking. And yes, Courtney shouldn't have rubbed her success in his face and she shouldn't have stole his thunder. But like I said earlier, it was from a place of hurt. This was a really good episode for both of them to learn. The next episode I wanted to talk about is one of the sweetest Courtney and Jean centered episodes. In the episode, the Jean and Courtney show, we start with Miss LeBond's giving a rather boring announcement. Most of the students were fed up with how boring the announcements were, including Jean. So he started to play around and made a little makeshift announcements in class. Courtney joined in with him and before you knew it, they were rhyming together and entertaining the entire class. As usual, they had great chemistry and worked well together naturally. Courtney always matched Jean's energy, which is hard to do considering his energy level is so high. Because of this little outburst, Mr. Grant offered them a trial slot to do the morning announcements. Ms. LeBonds would do the first half and Jean and Courtney would do the second half of the announcements. They accept and the Jean and Courtney show was born. Jean goes over to Courtney's house and works on the jingles every day and then every morning, Doug picks up Jean and drops them off together so that they can have a chance to rehearse before school. So the next morning comes and Miss LeBonds is not happy with this arrangement. Miss LeBonds even tries to sabotage them by slipping in a surprise piece of announcements with no preparation. However, Jean and Courtney crushed it anyway and just like that, their show is a renowning success. Miss LeBonds was so bitter in this episode, it was honestly hilarious. I also think it was cute how Jean always made sure Courtney's necklace was out of her mouth before every show. It was such a sweet little subtle detail. Also side note, Zeke is surprisingly critical over the morning announcements, it's really funny. We catch up with Jean and Courtney at Courtney's house, coming up with jingles for the next morning's announcements. It was super cute. Jean was impressed by Courtney's songwriting and they started to connect like they haven't really connected before. This was the first time that they honestly spent time together. When they were first dating, Jean wasn't really trying to get to know Courtney because he was focused on how he was going to get away from her. Now because they were friends and got to know each other at this point, Jean realized for the first time that he actually did like her. They held hands and shared their second kiss in the series. Ah, it's so cute. Again, this scene is just super sweet to watch. Also, side note, I love Courtney's Kitchen. I know it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I feel like it's important to point out that her kitchen was a pretty good vibe. It's such a pretty shade of blue. I always wanted a colorful kitchen, you know? No one deserves a white refrigerator. It's just cruel. Anyway, after this little kiss, they officially started to date. As you may have guessed, Doug was very suspicious of Jean, for a good reason, honestly. 
After all, Jean did literally break her heart and did a protest play against her that like he does not have a good track record when it comes to Courtney. But after Jean reassured Doug that his feelings were genuine this time, Doug approves of their relationship. After this, they become super lovey-dovey, holding hands, sharing putty cups, smelling each other's hair, sweet talking, the whole dating package. They even got each other flowers for Valentine's Day. However, because of their new relationship, they both lose focus on their show. Because of their relationship, their performance started to slip and they started forgetting to actually work on the show because they were too busy kind of being cute. It got so bad that Mr. Grant basically told them that they had to choose between having a relationship or the show. If they stayed together, he basically would pull the plug and they wouldn't have a show anymore. Gene thought the choice was easy. He wanted to continue dating and would rather give up on the show, which is surprising considering this is like a dream gig for Gene. However, Courtney meant more to him. This is actually the first time in a series Gene was willing to put a person over his music. Unfortunately, Courtney kind of let Mr. Grant get into her head. She was worried about the quality of their show and didn't want to lose this opportunity. The show meant a lot to her. So even though Jean said not to worry, it was a pretty bleak situation. They only had one more day to prove themselves to the entire school. Jean obviously loved doing the show too. He didn't want to choose at all. Sadly, even though it was an easy choice for Jean to choose Courtney, Courtney chose to do the show over the relationship, which sadly means they had to break up. Obviously, Jean was devastated. This was his first genuine heartbreak. In a way, I guess you can kind of say that was karma because he was the one dumped this time and he dumped Courtney in their first episode. However, I can't help but feel like this breakup was worse than the first time. The first breakup sucked, but they both kind of got over it pretty quickly. This time, both of them had a genuine bond and the only reason they had to break up was because of the show. So yeah, I, I felt bad for Jean because this was like, again, a genuine heartbreak. Jean was sad and lonely. I truly can't blame him. I would have been a wreck too, especially since they had to keep working together after this. But what Jean did next was surprisingly mature. He gets up in the middle of the night because he can stop thinking about her and he started to write down how he felt. He turned his sadness into a bittersweet little song. So the next day they do really well with the morning announcement. Even though it sucks they had to break up, Mr. Grant was in a way right. I don't agree with a teacher interfering with kids relationships but it seems like breaking up did bring the magic back to the show. After they finished with their official announcement, Jean surprised Courtney with the song. If you have good times and if you have good rhymes, you may have found your one and only, but then the one you like like says take a hike hike and suddenly you're lonely but still be glad even if you're sad. Take comfort just in knowing You'll be okay, it's Valentine's Day. Your heart's not broken, it's only growing. That boy's got a crush on me. He sung his feelings on the radio for her, letting the whole school hear his bittersweet love song. Man, the song gets me every time. It even had my boy Zeke crying. As Jean said, take comfort in knowing that you'll be okay. Your heart's not broken, it's only growing. It's such a sweet message and I wouldn't be surprised if those words help people through their own breakups. It's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but trust me, it's there. It sucks, but life's about the journey, good and the bad. Courtney, well, she loved the song and Miss LeBond's even approved. They got to keep their show and Courtney did give him a small little Valentine's Day kiss on the cheek. It was a bittersweet ending for both of them. They broke up, but once again, they ended things on good terms. I think this episode did a good job in showing how great these two characters are together. It's clear that even if they don't work out romantically, they're more than likely going to be friends for life. This is an episode where Jean developed a soft spot for Courtney. Before he would just call her annoying and avoid her at all costs. However, after this point, they remained good friends throughout the series and helped each other out whenever it was needed. Especially in the Christmas episode where Gene broke his record. Courtney was the one who helped distract him while the Belchers tried to record him a new album. The fact that he went over to Courtney's house to help her with decorations, even though he was sad over his records, just shows that even later in the show, he still sort of puts her ahead of himself, which is really cute and also very surprising for Gene. Gene is, like I said, a person who looks out for himself first and foremost. There is very few people that Gene will actually 
put before himself and those people are usually his family. It's such a satisfying growth since their first episode together. However, there is one more episode I'd like to talk about before I wrap up this video essay. The episode Video Killed the Geno Star is another episode that really tests their friendship. Remember how I said Doug is very supportive of any project Courtney does? Well recently he helped write and record a song for her called Locker Love. It's a cute typical pop song that is well produced by normal standards. Courtney wanted to shoot a music video for her song. Doug even got permission from the school to shoot the video. I swear maybe we should start calling Doug Tina Knowles because he definitely believes his child is the next Beyonce. Anyway there is one problem. Courtney wants to include Gene in the song and the video. However Gene just comes up with excuses not to be in it. Courtney is insistent that Gene is in her music video because he harmonizes perfectly with her. Plus she wants her friend to be involved in her passion project this time. So she goes to Tina and Louise and bribes them with candy. All they had to do was convince Gene to do the video. Obviously they take this bribe because duh it's candy. It's a smart move by Courtney, I give her that. The girls try to get Gene to do the music video but he is adamant on not doing it. When Louise pressures him and asks why, he finally tells her and Tina the truth in private. The reason he wouldn't do it was because to him the song was bad and sounded like everything else on the radio. He didn't want to be a part of it because it went against his musical integrity to be involved in such a generic song. However, he did not want to tell her because again it would hurt Courtney's feelings. So instead he's been avoiding her like the plague. I do appreciate how he told only Tina and Louise this. He didn't want to embarrass her or make her feel bad in front of anybody else. I do think that this struggle Gene is having is similar to a struggle Bob tends to wrestle with. Both Gene and Bob always led with authenticity. Bob runs his restaurants and cooks his food with integrity. Gene has the same philosophy with his music. Both of them refuse to sell out for the sake of their craft. After all, how can you have pride in something that isn't fully yours? So I truly get why Gene would struggle putting his name behind a song that he genuinely does not like. It's the same reason Bob couldn't turn his burger joint into a tiki themed restaurant. It's the principle of it. However, I also believe that there should be exceptions to that way of thinking, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Gene clearly doesn't want to do the video, but when Courtney begged him once again, he gave in out of guilt. So the next day they arrived at her house for rehearsal and sandwiches. Gene recorded his part of the song and you could almost see the light leaving from his eyes. It's like you can see the exact moment that his soul officially died. This pop song was killing Gene and his creative soul. After this, they picked out outfits, went over the storyboard, and also rehearsed the dance. Gene was progressively getting more frustrated with the lack of originality in the video. He even tried to suggest more creative ways to make the video unique, but his suggestions didn't fit the vibe Courtney was going for. After all that prep, they finally go to the school to actually shoot the music video. For the most part, the shoot was going pretty well. Gene was trying his best to hide how much he hated the video. He was participating but slowly you can tell he was getting more and more fed up. He was complaining to Tina and Louise more and more and it was becoming obvious he was reaching his limit. While shooting the last scene in the video, Gene officially loses his cool. He had an outburst in front of everyone and basically called her song and video awful. This obviously crushed Courtney and she ran off crying. Jean's opinion does mean a lot to her, so him saying that so harshly was rather mean. Jean felt bad, but he was adamant that the video was bad. However, Tina pointed out to him that doing this video made Courtney happy, and Jean is her friend. So as Courtney's friend, he should do it, not because he feels guilty, but because it will make Courtney happy. Sometimes we do things we don't like for people we do like. Seeing her excited over her passion project should be enough of a reason for Gene to help her make the video. He doesn't have to like it personally, but as long as she's happy, then he should do it for her. After all, Tina and Louise does stuff for Gene that they don't necessarily like, but because it's Gene and they love him, they do things for him. So maybe he should extend that same grace to Courtney. After realizing Tina had a point, he went to go talk to Courtney. He apologized for what he said and admitted that her song wasn't his cup of tea. However, he realized that even though he didn't like it personally, Courtney does like it. And if the song makes her happy, then he was willing to do the video for her. They agree and they both went back and shot the music video together. This time, Jean had a way more positive attitude and they got the video done. The video gets posted and well it's not exactly a huge hit on YouTube. However, seeing how happy it made her, Gene was fine with being in her video and even liked the post. He didn't really necessarily like that he was in it but you know it made her happy and Gene seemed satisfied with that. 
I wanted to talk about this episode because it was kind of a big moment for Jean. Jean is an artist and like I said earlier, doing a generic video goes against everything he believes in. Jean is very stubborn when it comes to music and will rarely compromise on the topic. He literally fired his entire crew earlier because they didn't live up to his artistic vision. However, this is one of the few times Gene is actually willing to put someone's wants ahead of his. The fact that Courtney was worth more than his musical reputation says a lot. He also learned that even though he is against mainstream music, that doesn't make generic music inherently bad. It's okay to like popular stuff. It's okay to like trends and follow them. Not everything needs to be contrarian. He learned to respect Courtney's version of art and her vision for music just like she's always respected his version. There is no right or wrong way to enjoy music. The fact that he learned this through Courtney is such a good choice. No one is saying that you have to change yourself or your preferences or anything like that. However, doing good things for people you care about is a nice lesson to learn regardless. Especially since Gene as a character usually only looks out for himself or his sisters. Having him care for someone outside of his family this much is good character growth. The same way Louise will only go out of her way for Rudy, Jean will only bend for Courtney and Alex, but we're not talking about him right now. It's really sweet when you think about it that way. Now only if we can get our good sis Tina to do way less bending for her ignorant ass friends, then the Belcher children will be set. Courtney and Jean make such an unexpectedly great team. Jean is canonically an annoying and loud person and so is Courtney. So having a girl like Courtney to match his energy is such a treat to watch. Courtney was introduced as a very annoying girl, kicking seats, chewing loudly, being pushy and talking way too much and having to sit at the back of the theater because nobody enjoyed sitting next to her. However, the more she was on the show, the more endearing Courtney became. Jean and Courtney worked well together and they taught each other important lessons. Courtney learned from Jean the joys of creating original projects. Doug is often involved in a lot of her activities. However, Jean taught her that she doesn't need her father to interfere with her work, that she was talented on her own and didn't always need her dad's input. Every time she collaborated with Jean, she would insist on doing it herself when Doug tried to butt in. And every time those two worked together, they made magic. Doug is controlling, but he means well as a father. So having Jean to help her establish boundaries with her dad is a healthy change. As much as Courtney learns from Jean, Jean learns more from her. Usually Jean is a morally great character who doesn't have strong opinions on right and wrong. If it's not about him directly, he usually can't be bothered to care about it. However, when it comes to Courtney, he wants to do the right thing. Courtney teaches him to have more compassion to those he cares about. He also learns how to balance being honest while still practicing kindness. In all the episodes I talked about today, Jean had to learn how to go about things with more care. He should be honest, but also remember not to be harsh at the same time with his words. There's no one else in the show that Jean will go out of his way for besides Courtney. Well, her and Alex, like I said, but again, that's for a different video. These Courtney Center episodes are some of the few times in the show where Jean is seen as objectively wrong. These are the episodes where we see Gene express some levels of guilt and hold himself accountable for how he treats other people. In most episodes, Gene kind of does and says what he wants to people with little to no consequences. But with Courtney, he's learned to be more gentle in his approach. That's why I believe that Courtney Wheeler as a character is important for Gene's emotional growth on the show. Gene's sticky hands and Courtney's spitty hands go very well together. From lovers to exes to rivals to lovers to exes and now to best friends, their journey has been a bittersweet treat for us as an audience. Hopefully, in the future, we get more episodes with these musical sweethearts together being the bestest of friends or sweetest of hearts. I'm just happy that we get to enjoy such a sweet pairing in the show. And I hope that we get so much more in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing about our blonde bombshell Courtney Wheeler, who gives you safe heart palpitations. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!